Hello everybody, Andy Kaufman here. My Facebook wheel is spinning. Uh, I think we're on now, so welcome. Uh, glad you could join me uh, whenever you happen to watch this. Uh, today we're in uh, John still, of course, and first we'll have a little song from uh, a group I sang with in Salem. Uh, it was a, a large group. Uh, and uh, these are some of the songs that we sang down there. So here we go, I think, uh, farther along. <laughs> Okay, uh, we are uh, in John. Uh, today's passage is John uh, 16, 25 to 33. And that's the final passage of the Upper Room Discourse uh, that goes from uh, at least chapters 14, 15, and 16. Um, and then chapter 13 kind of kicks it off. Uh, then in chapter 17, we have uh, Jesus' great prayer uh, that we'll get to. Uh, and so really these last verses kind of wind up the upper room discourse and uh, tell us some of the things uh, that Jesus has said uh, in the discourse are obscure uh, to the disciples uh, and even to us probably. Uh, were obscure. Uh, and uh, in other passages, he says that he speaks in uh, parables on purpose so that no one will be able to understand him uh, except those to whom he has chosen to give understanding. Uh, and Matthew 13 is an example of that, and I think Mark 4 uh, as well. Uh, and so basically, we're spiritually dead and cannot really understand what the Bible teaches us without help from the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so, for example, Paul writes in uh, 1 Corinthians 2.14, uh, the unbeliever does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Uh, but Jesus says here that a time is coming when he will no longer speak in obscure figures, but will tell us plainly about the Father. And since he will soon be departing from the earth, he must be referring to the further teaching uh, he will give through the Holy Spirit. 
uh, after the Holy Spirit is given at Pentecost. Uh, Paul goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 2, 15 to 16, uh, the one who is spiritual discerns all things, yet he uh, himself is understood by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to advise him? Uh, but we have the mind of Christ. Uh, so if we are spiritual, as Paul writes, we will be able to discern all things. Uh, the problem is, as he elaborates going forward, uh, is that we are not as spiritual as we could be, and that limits us in what we understand and discern. Uh, and by spiritual, he means walking by the Spirit, uh, being led and guided by the Spirit. Uh, and so that's something for us to think about. Uh, as for our passage, uh, Jesus repeats something that he has said before. He says, at that time you will ask in my name, and I do not say I will ask the Father on your behalf. So since Jesus has fulfilled his mission, uh, or soon will be fulfilling his mission, uh, we now have direct access to God the Father, and we can ask him for anything, uh, with the little caveat there that we must ask in Jesus' name. Uh, and asking in Jesus' name means asking for things that are consistent with Jesus' mission and with his character, uh, asking with proper motives. Uh, as James says in James 2, Five two to three, uh, he says, "You desire and and he's ready and willing to give give his children good things. Uh, what father doesn't give his children good things? Uh, maybe I should say, what good father?" Uh, and there's a reason that the Father will do this for us. Uh, 16.27 says, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. Oh, well, there's two reasons uh, that Jesus gives why the Father loves us. Uh, the first is that we have loved Jesus, and the second is we have believed that Jesus came from God. Uh, and so there's common uh, belief or thinking that God loves everyone. And I think that's true uh, in one sense, uh, but it's not really complete. Uh, yes, God loves the whole world. And that is why, according to John 3.16, he sent his one and only son. Uh, but John 3.16 goes on to say that whoever believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life. And I don't have to think uh, that I have to explain too much uh, how most of us, love uh, most people uh, in the sense that we want what's best for them uh, so much as possible anyways uh, we want what's best for them uh, in the context of what's reasonable i suppose 
uh, but we love our wives, we love our husbands, uh, we love our children and our parents uh, on a different level and in different ways uh, than how we love acquaintances or how we love complete strangers. Uh, so God loves his one and only son, uh, and this is on a level and in ways that he does not love angels or human beings uh, as a rule. Uh, but if we have loved Jesus and have believed that he came from the Father, uh, then we are adopted as sons and God loves us as sons. Uh, and I could be a PC there and say that he loves us as sons and daughters, uh, but in that culture, it was Uh, so these verses, they seem to be part of bravado or overconfidence on the part of the disciples uh, and part solid belief. Uh, apparently, they felt like what he has just said is very plain and not in figures of speeches, uh, and they could understand it. Uh, and so it could be that as the discourse progressed, uh, here at the end, Jesus has narrowed it down. Uh, to uh, has narrowed down what is uh, necessary uh, for them to believe. Uh, they have to uh, believe that they love Jesus and that they believe that he came from God. Uh, and they feel like uh, they do believe that, uh, and the rest will uh, become clearer uh, to them after Jesus leaves and goes back to the Father, and then the Holy Spirit comes. and some commitment on our part to find these things out and then commit to them. Uh, plus, we got to understand or we want to understand why did Jesus come from God? Uh, what was his mission? Why did he return to God? Uh, is he coming back someday? Uh, and so It's sometimes uh, when it comes to engaging in commerce, as some uh, cake bakers and wedding venue people will tell you, uh, we would like the law to protect us, uh, and so far it has for the most part, uh, sometimes more than others. Uh, but someday we may have to choose between following our faith uh, and engaging in commerce. It might cost us some money to be a Christian. Uh, and we should be careful what we ask for. Uh, we want the law to protect us, 
uh, but the law has, has to be neutral when it comes to different religions. Uh, and so if we want to have Christian things in the public school, uh, well, we're going to have to have Muslim things in the pu public school. Uh, there's even a and wholeness is much bigger. Uh, and so that's what we desire. Uh, and if we understand what Jesus has said in the discourse and we internalize those things, uh, then we can have peace. And peace is uh, uh, an essential element of the Messianic kingdom, uh, people say, scholars say, uh, from the prophets in the Old Testament. But since we are not yet completely in uh, the Messianic Kingdom, we live in this sort of already but not yet uh, in-between era uh, that is the Church Age. Uh, and during this era, we will experience trouble and suffering. And sometimes it will come... <laughs> because I am like the disciples, and my faith is not as mature as it could be. Uh, plus, I rely too much on myself and, and forget about the Holy Spirit, uh, and so I am not as spiritual as I could be in the sense of walking with the Holy Spirit, being guided by the Holy Spirit. Uh, some of my suffering is the result of my poor choices. Uh, some of it is the result of living in the fallen world. But God redeems all the suffering uh, to produce endurance, which produces character, which produces hope. Uh, and Paul says that hope does not disappoint. Now, hope is being confident about the future, uh, the future that we do not yet see. So yes, we will have to endure suffering in this world, uh, every human being will have to suffer uh, something of some sort.
sooner rather than later. Uh, and then we can have peace. Uh, we're not going to have peace if we are have abandoned Jesus uh, and go back to the things that we know. Uh, we'll have peace if we return to Jesus uh, and understand the things that he said uh, and have courage. Uh, we have to have courage because one thing of holiness on us descend come holy comforter thy sacred witness bear in this glad hour thou who almighty art now rule in heart and ne'er from us depart spirit of power to the great one in three eternal praises be and evermore thy sovereign majesty may we in glory see and to eternity love and adore. <clears throat> okay, thanks for tuning in, and uh, hope you have a good week, and hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.